So you come in and you go, I want to make a new ActionScript 3 file. So you click on that, opens up a new thing. So to code, we don't really need stuff here, which is just a stage initially. So we go to window and we find actions there. This opens up a new panel. Very first script we want to type, trace. If I open brackets, uh, this new flash CC thing tells me you're using a function that I know. I know this word. The word trace means something to me. And for it to actually do something, we need to put something in the bracket. So it goes put in a parameter inside the brackets. And so I can type in uh, 1. And then close the bracket and put a semicolon. Semicolon just means end of command, end of line. So if you had this on multiple lines, uh, that would treat that as one line. That's what the semicolon is there for, just to help it understand, oh, I finished a sentence or I finished a line. Now to test code, it's the same as testing animations. You, you just press com, you know, command enter or apple enter, uh, makes an SWF, which doesn't display any of your code, but while it's running, this output box down the bottom left here starts to show uh, the output. So we told it to trace one, so it's traced one. Right, nothing special. So let's do this. If we go back in here and we say 1 plus uh, 5. So test that again. And this, again, no, no, in, no output because we haven't told it to output anything to the screen. But in this output window down here, we've got 6. Here's some weirdnesses where people get stuck initially. If I was to do 1 plus and have 5 in quotes, and let's make this big if I can do this. Preferences, code, there it is, let's do that, oh, there you go, is that better? Oh okay. yeah, so 1 plus 5 is what? 1 plus 5. Sorry? 6. 6, but 1 plus 5 in quotes is? 1 plus 5. 15. Because what happens is, it takes this 1 and it puts it inside here, so this becomes 1 and 5 in quotes. So what, what? Whenever you do any kind of arithmetic, both things have to be numbers. If they're numbers, you can do lots of stuff. You can, you can you know, even divide this if you want. Like, what's 1 divided by 5? 0 0.2. Very happy to do that for you. But when you say, I want to add this and make that in quotes, what you end up getting is 15. Now, it's very strange if you just kind of look at it and go, that's unusual. But what's really happening, and I'll show you it on this example. So let's say we do 1 plus 2 plus uh, 3 plus 4 plus 5. What do you expect to see on the screen? 132. So you expect to have 132? Yeah. Okay. What other, what other things do you guys expect? I expect something different. 42. So 42. What else do you guys expect? I expect this. I could be wrong. I haven't tried this, so we're going to try it. So I'm going to press enter. Command enter. This says 3345. Now the reason I think this is happening is because this calculation happens first. Right? And when that happens, that turns into 3. So then 3 plus 3 in quotes becomes 33 in quotes. And so then the 33 in quotes tries to do this with 4, so therefore 4 moves in there with that. And then the 5, add 5 to that, so the 5 goes in and joins these guys. So therefore you get the 3, 3, 4, 5, because that's, that's a string. Now these other things are numbers. So as long as you understand the difference between strings and numbers, you're going to be fine. Now, if I take the quotes away, what do we expect to see? Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah. What else? Any other suggestions, what it might be? Good, right? So this one you guys are confident with. Let's try it. Bang, fifteen. So that's straightforward because it's just simple... 1 plus 2, well that's 3, 3 plus 3, well that's 6, 6 plus 4, well that's 10, 10 plus 5, well that's 15. And that, that's what happens. It goes one after the other. I draw a circle.
Bang, you guys have done this a few times. This circle is a shape. Until I make it into an object of some sort, it, it's not really something I can manipulate with code. I don't have that, that easy access to it. I could, but it's not as easy as what I'm about to do. So what we do is we modify it and convert it to a symbol. The reason we convert it to a symbol is so that we can group it and other things in that symbol can also be affected. So I could keep drawing inside that circle, make it a speci specific shape and style, and it would be cool. So if I click convert to symbol, it wants me to name it. Uh, so I call it circle, just because that's what I want to have in the library. So in my library, I now have a thing called circle. I can drag multiple circles out. That's all good, right? Now, as I drag circles out, these circles don't have instance names, meaning even though they're all clones of one another, code does not know how to differentiate between this one, this one, and this one. So we have to help it. Uh, so I can go in and I can say, well, this is, this is my circle one, this is my circle two, and this is my circle three. And if I do that, I now have access to these guys with code, potentially. Now let me show you what I mean. So you know how we traced numbers and we could get stuff? I can also do this because this thing here is one of the circles. So if I run this, it says to me that, look, this is an object of a movie clip. It's a movie clip because I made it a movie clip when I did convert to symbol. You guys remember that step. Because I've turned it into a movie clip, it also has some weird stuff such as an X. Now the X comes back at 176.5. So if we go back here, close that, if I move this circle, I don't know if you can see, but here is where the position is. This is the X position. If I change this X position to 200, that circle is positioned there. If I run the same code again, it tells me that it is at 200. So I'm now able to access a value inside of the circle. I can query, where are you? I can do this for all the circles. I can just do one trace after another. I can say, where are you at circle 2 and where are you circle 3? And I get three values. So this one is at 200, this one is at 327, and this one is at 0. So it's right on the margin, right on the side of the, the, the stage. So here's the other thing you can do with code. I can actually go and tell circle 1 that I want it to be at zero. So I want to override it. So now I've moved it. So you can see initially it starts here and then I move it over to the side. Now if I do something weird, um, such as say that this equals itself plus 50, where's it going to be? 50 points across to the right. But from where? From the original right so it moves this way it moves 50 pixels across so if you line these up you can see that's where it was and it's moved 50 pixels that way over to the right now this is the starting part of animation in in code because what you're doing here let's say we've got two frames um, every single time you get a frame that circle goes across to the other side of the screen now that's too fast so let's change it from 50 to 5 and you can see how that travels because now what's happening is every single time it gets to that frame with the code it adds 5 to where it was so it starts to move across the screen with the idea being that you know it can actually travel on that now now some of you might be thinking but what about the Y well if you, if you just change that to a Y now it's going to go diagonally down and there it goes traveling all the way down off the screen. So is that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Now to understand what these little things are, you have to understand what a movie clip is, and that is a that is a bit more reading. But movie clips have lots of things, and then I'll show you some of them. So we can have we can look at let's just look at circle one. So let's just make all of this circle one. We can find the x, we can find the y. We can also find the width, and we can also find the height. 
So these numbers that we get are all the numbers that basically, and I gotta, I gotta change the timeline back because this is running too often. Back to one frame. What we've got when we run this is we've got 228, 224, 224. So the circle is a perfect circle because the width and the height are the same. The Y position is 28 pixels from the top and the X position is 200 pixels from the left. Now because all of these things are values we can find out, we can also add to them, divide them, change them and do other things by them. Which means we could change the width and the height to be a new number. So here's, here's some weirdnesses. And this is where we get to, to actually uh, modifying things. So we go stage, add, event, listener. What kind of event? Ooh, look, I can, I can cheat. I can get it from the list. I can go mouse event, click, double click, bang. Unnecessary if you're working inside of Flash. So you can get rid of those, but it, it is useful if you're working outside of Flash. And then we name the function, so clicked. And then we say function, clicked, gets an event, which is a mouse event. Uh, and doesn't return anything. So there's all the fancy stuff you have to put in for this to actually work. But here's, here's where the code lives. The code for this is, I want to modify these guys. So I want to modify the width to equal the width divided by, actually times by 0 0.9. Can we do that? So I'll get rid of the trace because we're not tracing this. So every single time I click, oh, let's just do one, one at a time, let's just do one. Um, every single time I click, it squishes it to 90% of what it was previously. Yeah? Now I'm only squishing one side so it looks a little bit weird. So then we add the second one and we say height. Yeah? And then we actually want to find out, could I make this happen based on what I'm clicking on? Is that an option? Could I add this to only happen on the circles? So rather than adding it to the whole stage, I could add this to the circle one. I'll get rid of that. So I can add that to the circle one. I can add it to the circle two. Now, it still won't work because this is still hard coded to circle one, but let me show you. So, circle two or circle one still makes that small. Circle three doesn't make it do anything. Yeah? So, this one and this one, they work, but clicking this one doesn't do anything, clicking the white doesn't do anything. So, we've now attached this to only happen if circle one or circle two is clicked. Yet, this is still hard coded to only modify circle one. So, here's a trick. Okay? Event is this mouse event. The mouse event knows a lot of stuff. Let me show you. If we trace event and we click on this, this is all the stuff that Flash tells us back to us. So if we say event.target and I click it, it says that this is a movie clip. And this is a movie clip. If I say event.target dot name and I click on that it tells me that I clicked on circle one and this I clicked on circle two isn't that cool so if I can just say a variable which is what was clicked which is a movie clip which equals a that could I could I do this I'm hoping. Let's click it. No. Cannot convert circle one to a flash display movie clip. So this can't be a movie clip, so this has to be a string, but that, that won't technically work either because I can't use that as a string. So there's all these weirdnesses that happen. All right. What if I just say, without the name, right? What if I say, this is a movie clip, so therefore, if I get rid of the dot name, this event.target, the whole thing will be stored in the movie clip. Maybe that will work. Let's hope. And so we 
We still have an error. What, what happens if we just target of width, uh, target of height? Let's have a look. So what you want me to do is? Just, just target of width. Yep. Like that. There you go. You guys understand? So what we've done is we've managed to access whatever's being clicked on. So now if we just add circle three, all three of them should be clickable. And we can move them around and do whatever we want with them. Isn't that awesome? So, all of this, uh, let's show you all of it, is the code that's required to get this to actually modify an object on the stage. I'd like you to practice this, to, to give it a go at least just for today, just to warm us up, um, get it typed in, get it functional, and if you get stuck with anything, let me know. But you're just making some objects, putting them on the stage, making sure that they've got instance names, and then you're typing in some extra code. You don't necessarily need that, it will add it in for you, which is nice, and then they should be clickable. So you should be able to get that working.